All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video today, we're going to be doing a critique video, and uh, I do these every now and then. You guys seem to like them. This uh, particular one's different because it's a it's a pinup, and I don't like to do pinups usually because it's hard to tell uh, someone's ability from a pinup. Usually, you can't tell storytelling ability. They're basically useless in a portfolio for the most part, so I don't recommend people coloring them except just for the fun of it. But um, I'm making an exception with this one because there was some common problems that we see a lot anyway, and so I decided to go ahead and do a video anyway. But uh, your chances of getting a critique are much higher <laughs> with sequential pages, pages with actual uh, panels. But uh, this was drawn by a guy named John Mooreshead. It was inked by Tina... Hartwig, I believe is that last name. The colorist wanted to stay anonymous, so no credit for him. <laughs> All right, so uh, before we get into the actual coloring on this, I want to make a point about line art. And when you're deciding to do, whether they're portfolio pieces or for fun for your website or, or whatever your, your goal is, if it's for fun, color whatever you want. It, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But uh, if you're wanting to become a colorist or you wanting to, to break in quote unquote as a colorist uh, you want to make sure that the line art that you're using is really solid that it's really good uh, from a professional uh, pencil or inker or wherever you get it from you don't want there to be any question about the quality of the piece uh, that is caused by problems with the line art because you know, good coloring can sometimes bail out bad line art, but um, more often than not, the whole thing just ends up not working as well as it should. So don't, what I would say is not, don't allow yourself to sort of uh, shoot yourself in the foot, as they say, by working on something that, uh, where the line art itself has, has issues. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the line art in this one. Uh, overall, there's a lot of good things about it, line weights and spot blacks and a lot of stuff that, in the inks that are make it a pretty solid piece, but there are also some pretty big glaring problems with it. And so uh, I want to talk about briefly with those on this, So, just so you guys will all be on the same page here. So for one, on, on the gun, so if you think about how a gun is shaped, if you're seeing the front fingers of... Uh, or, the, or the front of someone uh, that is holding a gun, you're looking at the front of the gun. Okay, you can't see this angle of the fingers without there being, uh, without looking at the front. But look at the angle that the barrel of the gun is at. So we're looking at the barrel away from uh, the the camera. So the the gun's pointing away from the barrel uh, from the camera here, and it's pointing toward us here. So if you were to actually put this, if you were to take this uh, gun and turn it sideways to look at it, it would look something like this. Okay, so we've got a trigger, and his hand is here, okay, and the gun is then curved. Okay, that's the only way that this angle happens. Okay, so there's, obviously that's a problem. And one of the other big one things that jumped right out at me is... We've got a straight horizontal line going across the page. So he's standing on a building or something looking like a gargoyle or whatever. But look at the angle of the Washington Monument over here. Okay, in perspective, like this is just not possible. Okay, so, and, and these lines are perfectly straight. There's, there's no convergence. You couldn't even sell this as being some kind of really crazy angle perspective. It's just, it's just, it's just not right. So, there's problems with the piece from the get-go before you even get started, and if you're wanting to do a piece that is going to go into a portfolio or to show off what you're able to do, uh, pick something that, you know, a really solid piece. Okay, so, all right, so we made that point. All right, so here's uh, what the page looked like when I got it. Now, and, and this again could be an issue with the inks, it, it could just be the way it was colored, but uh, the thing that jumps out at me on this piece right from the beginning is his knee okay like it's this big flat kind of blob of, of color it's all about the same color and it draws a lot of attention it, it's the simplest it's a very plain object right in the middle of all of this detail so it draws a lot of attention 
And instead of doing something to minimize that in the colors, to draw attention where you want to draw attention, uh, it was it's colored the same way as everything else is. Uh, and so you get this, the eye doesn't know where to land on this picture, okay? There's not a strong focus. Now, I've done videos on focus before. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch those. <laughs> but uh, but when you have, a, a even with a pinup, there are focal points and there are areas that are more important than others. And as a colorist, it's your job to make those things show up more. And what that usually means is that you have more contrast and more uh, differences in value or more saturation or more detail or something around the places on the piece that are most important, which in this case would be kind of like his head and, his, and the gun and then, you know, the his, his big hand there. So if I was going to color this piece, I would want to do something to sort of have the eye kind of pull down at this angle so you could see this is the most important thing in this piece. Even though it's just a guy crouching there, you have the opportunity to make this read a bit better. Okay. Now, instead of doing that on this, everything is rendered in the exact same way at every single point on the pinup. And what I mean by that, and I, I think this, it's, it's not looking at the big picture. Okay. We're not looking at the big picture on this, the way this was rendered. So what probably happened is the colorist got really close and they said, okay, so we've got a jacket. I'm going to start painting this jacket. And so there's a part of the jacket and there's a part and there's a part and there's a part and we move down here and these parts and it's all, it's the exact same stuff every single fold throughout the entire piece, same stuff all the way down to the very tip bottom of his coat. It's that same yellow color, it's the same value, it's the same difference from the base color and you're not getting the big picture of what's important on this page. Now same thing with his skin okay so we've got the we've got a, a good bit of contrast and brightness changes here and value differences between the shadow and the light and all that's actually pretty good but that same exact difference carries over into his neck into his chest into his stomach which should really completely be in shadow almost even down here to this knee to his leg to the very bottom of the picture is the same same brightness, same highlight, same color, and so again, it's it's a very formulaic way of coloring, and it's not really what coloring is about. Okay, now what I I sort of before we got started, I, th I threw some real rough basic shadows. So don't judge my shadows. This is just a like a multiply layer. But uh, but what I did was, all right. So we we threw some of this knee in the shadow. Uh, some shadow under his neck just a little bit. Uh, we darkened his abdomen. We darkened this side of his of his hand here. And so, and I also put the same thing on the uh, uh, jacket. But even way out at this angle, you can see now you've kind of got that flow going down, that, that bright part, so your, your eye is kind of following that down the page. Okay. And you got the hand out here, it's about the same, but in the big picture, we're going from here to here, which is kind of you know, what we're doing in this uh, in this image. So, uh, and this took no time. I mean, I just spent a couple of seconds putting this in here. So it's not a big time issue. It's just a matter of using the rendering uh, wisely and using that rendering time wisely. Now, um, the other thing uh, kind of in general with this is the lighting situation. So... If you go back and look at just the inks and zoom up here, uh, this is the moon. Okay, so the moon is out. It should be nighttime, and that is, and that's not the that's not the picture that I get from this. I don't. I'm not reading that this is night. Um, the, the sky is pretty dark, but the sh the clouds are so white, and he's lit very very brightly, very vibrant, um, and the colors almost clash a little bit, like between the red and the brown in his jacket. Uh, it's a little too much saturation. Um, now, there's a lot of ways you can handle that. Um, and again, just really briefly, I, I threw in just a little bit of uh, a color uh, color mode uh, adjustment layer here. And 
it, and then there's, I've, there's still other things I would change with this. Don't look at this as, as a final version. But the palette makes a little bit more sense. Like it feels like it might be night here. Now the clouds would need to be darkened and the moon probably not, maybe not quite so bright or, or do something there with, with a difference in the background. But, but overall, think about how this would look at night, you know. And so it's, uh, it's a very simple, quick fix here uh, just to, for the sake of time. But think about your environment before you put your character in it and just start rendering, okay? Now, um, to get into some of the more kind of nitty-gritty issues on this one, um, let's see, where is my... Let me go to this tool here. So, this rim light, okay, rim lights are uh, kind of often overused, I would say, but but this one kind of comes at them at, at almost all angles. So, you've got a light along the edge here, and I'm talking about this little yellow light here. It goes along this side, so it's coming from the right, 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 but it's also coming from the left. Now, it's the right here, it's the uh, kind of the top here, and it's the left over here. Now, there are scenarios where that might be possible if the light was directly behind him and maybe you were getting a little bit from all angles, but it doesn't really make sense on this piece, um, you know, especially underneath here. Like, he, this would all be blocked by the jacket, you know, so, and, and his legs and everything else. So, it's just kind of a strange, again, it's one of those things where I think we're, instead of thinking about it as a whole, or looking at things too closely and breaking things up into little pieces and rendering those things instead of thinking about rendering the page as a whole. Um, and uh, I think we've covered most of everything else that I that I saw in this, but but even with with the skin, with the jacket, with all those things, you know, think about taking some of these shadow colors and putting it in here. Now, I don't, I'm not actually under the inks on this. I'm just making a point. But, but think about putting more detail here, less detail in these places where it's not quite as important. And even the level of detail that you put in can be used as a storytelling device. Because if you've got more detail up here, then, of course, you're going you're gonna to be looking at that. And, and I've got a, a, a pretty big section in my coloring course that talks about using level of detail uh, as uh, another tool to help separate planes and create uh, uh, separations between what's important and what isn't and, and all those sort of things. So um, so anyway, uh, this is a quick and simple one today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to get critiques on your own work, uh, you can send those in. And I, I do them rarely, so don't hold your breath, uh, but you can send those to me if you like. Now, if you're in a student in my course, I, I, I do critiques for everything that gets posted there. So that's one of the benefits of being there is... You don't have to wonder if you're going to get picked or not, because I do critiques for everybody. But uh, there's a link to the description, of course, uh, uh, for that and my Patreon, where you can get some PDSD files and kind of dig into those if you like. And, of course, if you enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you uh, want to see more of this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.